I said any conqueror in the house, I'm a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. Every day I will be a conqueror. Once again, I welcome you to the final solution retreat. Final solution. Somebody shout, final solution. The Lord will make it a final solution for you in Jesus' name. Where well, you failed before, you will succeed now. Where you were defeated before, you will conquer now. More than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. Where are you? Father, we thank you for this day. I will thank you for this retreat. Our final solution retreat. Thank you, Lord, because you have given us Jesus Christ. And through him, we overcome. Every giant will bow. Every opposer will bow. Everyone that comes against any of us will be defeated in Jesus' name. Make your people more than conquerors. We well, thank you because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can have your seats. We're looking at Numbers chapter 13. And I read from verse 27. Numbers chapter 13, verse 27. And he told him, and said, We came unto the land, with that thou sentest us. And surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. I'm sure you're familiar with this story. The children of Israel as a nation, they were going to the promised land. A land flowing with milk and with honey. They wanted to have an evidence that what God had said was actually true. And so they requested that Moses would allow some people to go to the promised land and check up what's there. And when we get there, what we're going to find. And so Moses consented because the Lord allowed him. And he sent 12 leaders, 12 elders, one from each tribe. Go and check up. They went, they spent 40 days, and they came back. And here is their testimony that they had gone and they had seen the fruit of the land. But then they added their own idea. Verse 28. Nevertheless, the people, the strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. And the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. And the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and the coast of Jordan. Everything they said was true. But they had a wrong motive, a wrong attitude, a wrong conception. You know, sometimes somebody can tell the truth, absolute truth, wonderful truth, entire truth, complete truth, and yet have a negative slant, a negative attitude, an unbelieving disposition. That's what happened here. For starting, 
And Caleb stilled the people before Moses. He said, don't say what you are saying with the attitude with which you are talking. And said, let us go up at once and possess it. For we are able, well able, to overcome it. Anybody on the side of Caleb? I'm on the side of Caleb. This morning I declare, let us go up at once and possess the land. For we are well able in your personal life, even if you have to stand alone, like Caleb, you will be able. Well able. Look at verse 31. For the men that went up with him said, we were not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is the land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it a man of great stature. And they and there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as what? As grasshoppers. And so were we in their sight. We're talking about the giants, conquering the giants through Christ. You might be alone, facing giants, you will conquer. Your family might be facing giants, spiritual giants, natural giants, historical giants, territorial giants. Whatever giants they are, now that you are here, standing for your family, your family will conquer every giant. The church, as a local church, the church, as a national church, the church, as the church of a denomination, like Deep Alive Bible Church. There might be giants, but we have conquered already. Where we're going, we will get there. No giant will stand in your way. No giant will stand in my way. No giant will stand in our way. We will get to where God has ordained that we will get to in Jesus' name. What are giants? What are those giants intending to do? The giants they saw in the land of Canaan were resisting the possession of the children of Israel. The Lord had called them. And the Lord had prepared the land for them. And he had said, I am taking you through. And you will go through until you get to them. And then they went to search out the land. They said, we saw the land. Wonderful land. Good land. A land flowing with milk and honey. But there's only one challenge we have. The giants there will not allow us to conquer and to possess. Giants are whatever entities, whatever personalities that will hinder you as an individual, a man or a woman. 
that will hinder you as a family, that will hinder you as a professional, that will hinder you as a person wanting to have spiritual exploits, that will hinder you as a local church, that will hinder any body of believers from getting to where spiritually, ministerially, personally, and denominationally to get to where they ought to go. But those giants, if you are going to possess your possession, you must conquer them. And Christ has opened the way for us to conquer every giant. It will be your lot. It will be your experience. It will be your possession. In Jesus' mighty name. Three things we're looking at. Number one. The opposition of giants in the last days. The opposition of giants in the last days. Number two. The overthrow of giants with lasting defeat. When we defeat the giants, it will not be a temporary defeat. It will be final. You didn't hear that one. It will be final. Every giant before you. Every giant against your family. Every giant against your local church. Every giant in your region. Every giant in your state. Every giant anywhere that comes across any church that is called deep alive. Total, complete, spiritual, supernatural, knockout, knockdown, knock up in Jesus' name. The overthrow of giants with lasting defeat. Number three, the operation of God's Spirit through loyal disciples. The operation of God's Spirit through loyal disciples. Thank God. I'm part of the overcomers. I say, thank God, I'm in the fellowship of, of the overcomers. Thank God, I am in the assembly of the overcomers. I'm an overcomer. I am an overcomer. Heaven says yes and amen to your statement in Jesus' name. Number one, the opposition of giants in the last days. As we think about the last days, the New Testament in particular tells us there's a lot of time. There are the last days. And in the last days, we know that there will be giants trying to stop the onward journey and the progress of the church of the living God. But those giants have their defeat prophesied already. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. I read from verse 3. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that they shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Those giants, the spirits of the Antichrist, will go to different organizations, denominations, and they'll make them to fall away. We will not fall away. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition 
that's the captain, the leader, the forerunner of all the giants who possess your position, who possess and exalteth himself above all that is called God, all that is worshipped, so that he, as God, seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Think about that. A giant not wanting anyone to get to God, to approach God, to worship God, and to move towards serving God, saying, where are you going? What are you praying for? What are you seeking? Don't you know I'm here? I'm the God you're looking for. The Antichrist will not be your God. The opposers will not be your God. The scorners will not be your God. The blasphemers will not be your God. But he will sit in the temple of God, saying he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withhold is, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. The mystery of iniquity, that he is the propeller and the one engineering and the one preparing the way for the Antichrist to take over the whole world is ready at work and it's referred to as the mystery of iniquity who is ready at work only he who let us will let until he be taken out of the way the Holy Ghost is still here. And the Holy Ghost is stopping him from taking absolute and total control. The church, the church militant, the church triumphant, and the church indwelled by the Holy Ghost, that church is still here. That's the one withholding, restraining, checking, keeping at a distance, this man of perdition. But when we're taken away in the rapture, then he will come in full color. Thank God I will not be here at that time. And then in verse 8, shall the wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall conquer and consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. In verse 9, even him whose coming is after the walking of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. With all deceivableness of unrighteousness, in them that perish, I will not perish. In them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for that, for this cause, God shall send them, permit for them, strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. I will not believe a lie. Are you there? I will not believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You can tell from the passage you have read the opposer is there. Is the Antichrist. His spirit is already at work. But now he walks in a subtle manner through individuals that surrender their hearts, their skill, 
their voice, their lives unto him. Let me show you an example. Acts chapter 13. Acts of the Apostles chapter 13. What you didn't hear from verse 7. It says, this man was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. There was this official of a, of a nation that wanted to hear the word of God, the word of salvation, the word of eternal life. But look at verse 8, for to Limas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation. Can you imagine somebody bearing the name and those who know the language will know that the name means sorcerer. And when they call him and then said, sorcerer, they say, yes, what do you want? I'm here. I pray you will not be a sorcerer. And those who didn't, need, who didn't need interpretation of his name, they knew he wasn't hiding it. He was a sorcerer. But the point is, he was stood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Nobody will turn you away from the faith. You came for the final solution of spiritual problems of your life, physical problems in your life, emotional problems in your life, professional problems in your life. You came for final solution. Nobody will turn you away. But this sorcerer wanted to turn the deputy away. That's the opposition of giants walking from that time, even till that this time, last days. Then said Saul, also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, no enemy will stand before you. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, no opposer, no opposition will conquer you. But you know there are people, they are going about complaining, crying, and they are weeping. They are opposing me. They are going against me. I want to have final solution. They will not allow me to have final solution. My brother, my sister, all that time you are spending in complaining, you could spend that time in prayer. All that time you are spending crying, you could cry to the Lord. All that time you are telling other people, come and hear me, see my situation. You can say those same words to God. Turn away from man whose breath is in his nostrils and turn to the Almighty whose breath is not in his nostrils, who is eternal, who is mighty, who is powerful, and lay your complaints in the sight of the Lord. If you don't have power to conquer the giants, the only ghost in you will conquer the giants for you. And Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, said his eyes on him. Set his eyes on him. Can you say that with me? I want you to say that again. Have you noticed when somebody is intimidated? Have you noticed when somebody is frightened? Have you noticed when somebody powerful and mighty confronts somebody and that person becomes afraid? 
The first thing he does, he drops his head. He cannot look at that messenger of the Antichrist, eyeball to eyeball. When you do that, the messenger of Satan will catch you and say, I got him. He cannot look at me. Paul said, his eyes on him. There are people, whenever the enemies uh, do whatever, they will look to that side and look to that side. The only side they will not look at is the side of the enemy. Why don't you look up for a moment and look at that enemy? See what he's bringing out of the pocket. See what he's doing and see what the demonstrations are. If you are full of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost fire will spark through your eyes, you will conquer them. But if you don't have Holy Ghost, all you have is the human ghost, human spirit, you'll be shaking. You will not shake again. Your final solution to fear has come. Final solution to courage has come. Was Paul afraid? Tell me now. Think about Paul. Think about Paul. Even before he was born again, he will go to houses he had never gone. And he wasn't afraid to go to those houses. Any Christian there, any believer there, any follower of Jesus there, he will arrest them. If when he was serving Satan, he was not afraid, now serving God, should he be afraid? If when you were serving Satan, before you were born again, you were fearless, bold, and courageous, how much more now I command the spirit of fear to come out of you. He set his eyes on him and said, O fool of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of who? Of the devil. Look at Paul. He spoke directly. I pray God will give you this courage. Will give all of us this kind of courage. That child of the devil. Thou enemy of all righteousness. Will thou not see stop to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now behold the hand of the Lord is upon thee. And thou shalt be blind. Paul, what if you say it and it does not happen? When somebody feels or the Holy Ghost says something, it must happen. When you speak to your mountain full of the Holy Ghost, it must happen. And when you speak to any challenge in your life, as now you come and you have the final solution, that thing will happen. Seen, not seeing the sun for a season, and immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. The power of Elimus, the power of the sorcerer, could not subdue Paul the Apostle. The same Holy Ghost in Paul is that same Holy Ghost in you. The same power in Paul is that same power in you. And the same assignment Paul, the apostle, had is the same assignment you have. And if God gave him that power, he will give you that power. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. 
And he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. And then the deputy, when he saw what was done, he believed the people you are preaching to will believe. The people I am preaching to will believe. The sorcerer will not take the major part or any part of your understanding. Did you hear that one? Elimus will not turn you away from the faith. You will believe. And it says he believed being astonished at what was done and at the doctrine of the Lord. Point number two now, the overthrow. We've we'll touched a part of that, the overthrow of giants with lasting defeat. Overthrow of giants with lasting defeat. Look at that verse 12. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, he believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. The doctrine of the Lord is the doctrine of power, the doctrine of victory, the doctrine of overcoming. And you will overcome every challenge, every evil against your life, against your family, against anything God has called you to do in Jesus' name. The overthrow, overthrow, we will overthrow them. You will overthrow them. Our church will overthrow them. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 6. Second Peter chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 6. It says in verse 6, wherefore also, Second Peter chapter 2, verse 6, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, he condemned them with an overthrow. He condemned them with an overthrow. He consumed them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. That Sodom and Gomorrah were overthrown when they opposed those angels, and when they wanted to harm and hurt, Lord, in that same way, every opposer of the gospel, every spirit that opposes the gospel will be overthrown now and forever in Jesus' name. Verse 9, the Lord knows how to deliver the ungodly out of temptations. He will deliver you. He knows how. He knows the power of the giants against your life. He knows the power. He knows the intention of the giants against your family. He knows the power and he knows the skill and he knows the occultic manipulation of those um, evil people working against your family and against your church. He knows how to destroy them and to deliver you, the godly, out of all temptation and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. Look at verse 13. In verse 17, rather, these are wells without water. You are going to where you can have the water of life. And they confront you in the way. 
and they oppose you and they want to stop you. They say, Why are you going there? Why are you going that far? We have wells of water here, and yet their wells are without water. They will not deceive you. I said, They will not deceive you. There are clouds that are carried with a tempest to whom the mist of darkness is reserved how long? Forever. Your enemies cannot prevail. I said your enemies cannot, they cannot prevail. They will be overthrown like the giants were overthrown in Jesus' name. Those who oppose sound doctrine, the giants, those who oppose the word of God, the giants, those who oppose the message of salvation and the message of holiness, they are giants. It might appear you don't have any power against them. God has power that can overcome them. You'll be defeated. Your message will take root in the hearts of the people you are preaching to. Can I hear your good, good amen? First John chapter 4 verse 4. First John chapter 4 verse 4. Ye of God, little children. Think about that. If the little children, the new converts, are of God, the senior ones, the elders, the pastors, the workers, part-time and full-time, we're all of God. I said we're all of God. If those who are just coming in, little children, and they're having conversion salvation, if they are of God, all those of us who have been uh, in the Lord for a number of years now, either we're preaching, or we're singing, uh, or we're working technical, or we're working, uh, overseeing the affairs of the congregation, you are all of God. I am of God. Say it for yourself, I am of God. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Anyone that will not overcome, anyone that cannot overcome, men and women, we have overcome. We have overcome them. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Do you believe that? I said, do you believe that? If you believe that, shout, Amen. Amen. Moses appeared before Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said, What are you demanding? What do you want? The children of Israel must go out. God sent me with a message. Let my people go. And Pharaoh said, I don't know what you're talking about. Show me a sign. And then he threw his rod down. What happened? I said what happened? Became a serpent. And Pharaoh said, You want to do a miracle? And you want to convince me? He called all his magicians. He said, Bring your rods. Throw your rods now. What happened to the rods of the magicians? They became serpents too. And Pharaoh said, You see that now, but greater is he in Moses than was in all the magicians. And the rod of Moses swallowed up all the rods of the magicians, and they lost all their power. Like God was with Moses, the Lord will be with you. Elisha was sitting down in his house. Naaman came from Syria. 
And the king sent to, to him. That's what he came for. He wants to be cured of his leprosy. And Naaman did, uh, um, Elisha did not even stand up. He said, go tell him, dip yourself in Jordan seven times, you'll be all right. And then Naaman said, me? And not a banner and far apart, rivers in Damascus greater than the river in Israel. Greater is he in us than he that is in the world. And Naaman, you need to realize that this one is original power, supernatural power, heaven sage power. Stop arguing. And his servant spoke to him, calmed him down, and he went into Jordan one, two, three, seven times. Total healing came. Greater is he in Elisha than in all the rivers and all the men where Naaman was coming from. If you have Jesus in you, that's the greater power. That's the final power. The name of Jesus is greater and higher than any name. He will subdue the enemy for you in Jesus' name. Greater is he in you than he that is in the world. You have the victory. I have the victory. The overthrow of giants with lasting defeat. Point number three now. The oppression of God's spirit through loyal disciples. The oppression of God's spirit through loyal disciples. The power of the Holy Ghost will now begin to manifest in your life than ever before in Jesus' name. It's not going to be a one-man oppression. It's not going to be a one-family oppression. All of us will so have, will so be indwelt with the power of the Spirit of God that as you open your mouth, Giants will fall before you. First Corinthians chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 6. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 6. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God, which walketh all in all. You understand that? Which walketh all things in all believers. Which walketh all, anything you want him to do, he walketh all. Any mountain you want to remove, he walketh all. Any opposer you want to dislodge, he walketh all. Any difficulty you want to erase, a face, he walketh all. He walketh all in all, in all of us, in you, in me, in us together. And it is by the operation of the Spirit of God. Verse 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to, tell me, is given to tell me every man that means everyone to the brother and to the sister to the men and to the women give it to every man to profit whether the indwelling of the holy ghost will be profitable in your life profitable in your family for to one verse eight is given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom. If people have been telling you 
How do you act like this? You don't have wisdom. Let them wait. Don't let them talk to you until after the retreat, final solution retreat. They'll be surprised at the wisdom you will have. So I know that the word of knowledge by the same spirit somebody is trying to teach you something and then after he has taught you he asked you what I taught you yesterday two days ago how about it now tell me repeat everything to me you look down you look up you look sideways you look everywhere I'm sorry I have forgotten how do you always forget how you see that you cannot retain knowledge? Let them wait until after the final solution retreat. Your brain will be transformed. Your mind will be transformed. You will remember. You will smile and say things are different now. I remember. Knowledge that will profit you. Knowledge that will move you forward. And then when you go for any test or any exam, I used to forget, I used to forget. Wait until after the retreat. No more forgetfulness. To another phase by the same spirit. And to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit. And to another the working of miracles. Amen. To another prophecy. To another diverse discerning of spirits. And you know, sometimes a believer, but you have some substance, you have some money, and people are becoming to you and they tell nice, nice stories, and you're so sympathetic. And then you give, you empty what you have and give unto them. Only after a few days, you remember? And then you checked up. Everything they told you was not absolute truth. They lied to you. And you have been losing money, losing material things to the people that come because they always tell all these stories and you never knew. After this retreat, the first person that comes and I want to give it to you again. As they are talking, uh, the Holy Ghost will give you discernment. You will say, how about this? How about this? How about this? They will not deceive you anymore in Jesus' name. You will be on top of every situation. To another diverse kinds of tongues. To another interpretation of tongues like God gave interpretation to Joseph to Daniel it will give you understanding in interpretation but all these workers that one and self same spirit dividing to every man Every man, you have your portion. Every man, you have your portion. Every man, you will give your own portion. Severally, as he will. First Thessalonians chapter 1. In First Thessalonians chapter 1, reading from verse 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power. Are you not concerned that you have spoken to so many people, and you have prayed to so many people, and the word was just word? It went through one ear and came out the other ear. And it was floating on their mind like oil floating on water. It had no effect. But now your word will have power. Will have authority. 
every giant will bow before you. The spirit of Caleb, the Lord will give unto you. The spirit of Joshua, the Lord will give unto you. The gospel came not unto you in what only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost. And in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men were were among you for your sakes. Things are different now. Brother Caleb, Sister Caleb, Brother Joshua, Sister Joshua, things are different now. Giants will not stop you. Opposers will not stop you. The spirit of the Antichrist will not stop you. Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14, verse 6. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephone, which were of them that searched the land, wrenched their clothes, and they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. The Lord, if the Lord delighteth in us, then He will bring us into this land. He will bring you into this possession and give it unto us. A land which floweth with milk and with honey. A land which floweth with milk and with honey. This year is about to run to an end. We're now approaching the new year. All these ten spies, they said, the future is dark. If we move on, the giants will get us and the giants will crush us. Even the land eaters of the people. But I'm a junior brother to Caleb. I'm a junior brother to Joshua. Are you a junior sister to Caleb? And to Joshua? This coming year, you will conquer every giant. All that the evil reporters are fearing, you will not fear. And you will not die. You must see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Every good thing the Lord has promised his church, the Israel of God, you will see and you will possess. Your name is registered in heaven that you will possess. Your name is written in heaven that giants will not overcome you. Verse 24, but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him and has followed me fully, him will I bring into the land. Anyone get into the new year victoriously in spite of the giants? And you are going to have everything the Lord has ordained for you? It will add together since you became a Christian or since you were born, everything God intended. And you have missed one, you have missed two, you have missed three, you have missed number four. He'll add everything together. In the coming year, you will possess. Because you have another spirit. 
I will bring him into the land whereunto he went, and his seed shall possess it. My converts will possess it. My spiritual children will possess it. Joshua, I'm reading from chapter 14, verse 10. Joshua, chapter 14, verse 10. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive. He'll keep you alive. As he said, these 40 and 5 years, long time, long time, he wasn't sick, he didn't become an invalid, he wasn't tired, he didn't fall by the wayside, you will not fall by the wayside. Even since the Lord spake this word, unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day four year, uh, four score, and five years old, 85 years old, and it was just 30. 65 years old, and you are just 30. 45 years old, and you are just 30. 25 years old and you are just 13. 85 years old and you are just 13. I will see you at the next retreat. As yet, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so, my strength is now for war, but to go out and to come in, but to stand up and to sit down, but to jump and to run, but to overcome and to overthrow. Now, therefore, give me this mountain, whereof the Lord spake in that day, for thou heardest it in that day how the Anakims were there, and I'm not afraid of them, and that the cities were great and, and fenced, and I'm not afraid of them. If so be, the Lord will be with me. Then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord has said, I am able to drive them out. I said, I am able to drive them out. They will not drive you out of the land of promise. That land flowing with milk and honey, nobody will drive you out of it. The giants will not drive you out. Am I talking to somebody there? They will not drive you out. Those giants, those supposers, those in limas, you will drive them out. We have read about Caleb, but Caleb had a partner. His name, what's his name? Tell me, tell me. As we have read about Caleb, look at chapter 10 of Joshua, verse 12. Chapter 10, verse 12. Then speak Joshua to the Lord in the, in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. Amorites who are Canaanites and who are, who, are, who are giants, even Joshua will drive them out. No man shall be able to stand before you. All the days of your life, 
especially now in this new coming year, no evil power, occultic power, giant shall be able to stand before you. And he, Joshua, said, in the sight of Israel, son, S-U-N, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon, and the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the people had avenged, had overthrown themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jesha? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and he stood not to go down upon a whole day, about a whole day, and there was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man for the Lord fought for Israel. No day like that before or after. Look at your life. This day, there will be no day like this day. This week, there will be no week like this week. The rest of this month, there will be no month like this month. And this coming year, are you there? Are you ready? This coming year, there will be no year like this coming year. Victorious brother, victorious sister. Overcoming brother, overcoming sister. Conquering sister, conquering brother. The spirit of the Lord is upon you. Giants will not stop you. Opposers will not stop you. Antichrist will not stop you. Canaanites will not stop you. They will not drive you away from the land flowing with milk and honey. You'll be a possessor. You will be a conqueror. You will be an overcomer. What are you? Stand up like Caleb. Stand up like Joshua. You will possess. Tell the Lord, I'll possess. Tell the Lord, I'll possess. It's yours. You'll conquer the giants. They want to drive you back. Back to the Red Sea. From the land of Canaan. From the land of promise. For what you are stretching your mind and your hand to. They want to say, you cannot be a conqueror. Who are you? You cannot be an overcomer. Who are you? Those giants, they want to nullify the good promises of God you are holding on to. And they say, no matter how you pray, no matter how you proclaim, you will not achieve. You have conquered them already. You have overcome them already. Don't look down. Look up. Don't be afraid. Be strong. Don't allow the giants to determine your location. To keep you in the wilderness. Move on. Push on. Pull through. Pursue.
Don't allow the giants to make you lose your breath. Tired, weak, weary, cannot take the next step. Get up. Push on, pursue, possess. Pharaoh will not stop you. Nebuchadnezzar's threat will not stop you. The magicians of Egypt will not stop you. The giants of Canaan will not stop you. Intimidators in the land will not stop you. Move on. Don't allow the giants to determine your mind, your state of mind, to determine the limit of your ministry. To determine what mountain you move or what mountain will stay. Move on. Receive that same spirit in Caleb. Always saying, I am able. I am able. I am well able. Tired? Never. Weak? Never. Exhausted? Never. Afraid? Never. We're conquering every giant that comes against us in the land. They come with occultic power, we overcome. They come with magical power, we overcome. They come with human energy, we overcome. Receive the spirit of the conqueror. The spirit of Caleb. The spirit of Joshua. The spirit of Paul. Every giant must be conquered. Every opposition must be brought now. Not by human weapon. Not by fighting, by faith that cannot be denied. If the sun to steal, by the declaration of Joshua and the moon stage. By the proclamation of Joshua to allow him to finish the battle. 
Everything that needs to stop will stop. For you to finish the battle and for you to finish strong. Move out of the company of the conquered and move in to the assembly of the conquerors. The people that know no defeat. More than a conqueror, you are. Great I see that is in you than he who is in the world. Do you know the particular giants? Wanting to stop your way from inheriting the promised inheritance. They will not stop you, you will stop them. They will not weaken you, you are weaken them. They will not peg you down, pin you down. You will stop them and pin them down. Pray about this coming year. The year to enter into that land flowing with milk and honey. What has the Lord promised you for the coming year? The giants are bragging. The giants are boasting. He will not enter. We will not allow him. It will not happen. They say on their dead body, Will you enter? That's right. That's right. That's right. On their dead body, you will walk through. You will walk over. Overcome them. 
trample on them. Defeat them. Destroy them. Make this a special day. A day of inheritance. A day of possession. A day of conquering the giants. No sin will stop you. You'll conquer. The flesh will not stop you. You will conquer. The world will not stop you. You have conquered. The devil will not stop you. You have conquered. The gangs will not stop you. You have conquered. That dream will not stop you. You have conquered. In Jesus' name we pray. Give God a concourse. Amen. You are a new man. You are a new woman. The place God is taking you to, you will not look sideways. Left or right, you will not look back. You keep on looking unto Jesus. He will take you there. If you have been diverted from your course, from the straight course that leads to the promised land, the Lord will bring you back to the right way. From now on, you'll be a focused man, a focused woman. Diversions will not attract you again. Moving on, moving on, moving on, every giant will clear before you. A new height in this coming year. A new position in this coming year. A new possession in this coming year. All those things that you to walk on you and trample on you, you will walk on them and trample on them. I am an overcomer. I am a conqueror. I am a victorious believer. It is done. It is done. It is done. For who? I said for who? I'm looking for that me. I said for who? Your hands are blessed. Your life is blessed. The word of your mouth is blessed. You will see favor where you have never seen favor. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all your people. Conquerors are we. Victors are we. Overcomers are we. Oh Lord, put the spirit of the conqueror in everyone in Jesus' name. Every giant destroyed before you. Every yoke broken away from your life. All your fetters and all the cause that were pulling you back, everyone caught away from your life. 
you will walk with no hindrance. You will speak with no limitation. You will move on with all power. Giants will vanish before you. Now you can be what God created you to be. In this new year, be a champion. In this coming year, be a champion. That mentality of a grasshopper, the Lord erases from your life in Jesus' name. I will live to see you conquer. I will live to see the fulfillment of this prayer in your life. You will be an achiever. Spiritually, academically, professionally, in your family, in your community, you will succeed. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. In Jesus' name I pray.